Hey, what up everybody, it's Tuna. Today I wanted to showcase a build that I have been working on in the past few leagues and it's something that I'm finally happy to share. Although I have to say and preface this that it's quite an expensive build. So it's something that you want to go into if you have around 150, 200 divines and more the merrier of course. It is very, very uh, currency hungry build. That is uh, my Blade Vortex scion so the first reason why people might think why would you go scion over occultist i can go over uh the reasons as to why i think scion is the best choice here so the first reason of course is that we get easy access to the unnatural instinct here this unnatural instinct is pretty insane in that it gives us access to all of these aoe nodes uh, some of these life regen nodes and of course uh the skill effect duration if you mouse over it here you can see all of the things that it gives it's pretty insane honestly on top of that we are also getting a lot of strength right um, that is because we are using a lethal pride here and the lethal pride is applying strength to all of the nodes within um, This radius so you can see that there's four strength and so on and so forth And then what that adds up to is 84 strength and also 10 intelligence Which is really good for our omni is the next choice I'm, I wanted to go for so I went for omni of course more on that later So why do we use a lethal pride here? Uh, we use a lethal pride here because of course it gives us a ton of stats We have 5% strength 5% strength 5% strength again 4% max life uh, this is a, a empty node, but then we have double damage. Of course, you can get more um, double damage instead of strength, but I decided to go for uh, more Omni here and get one double damage node there. And we got 5% strength there again. Uh, it's honestly like this was a really, really cheap jewel. There's uh, various jewels in this region which are very, very strong and very cheap uh, because nobody's really looking for them, right? But the really, really good interaction that I like to use uh, with this here is the fact that I'm also using Transcendent Flesh, right? And what Transcendent Flesh does is it gives us 7 crit multi per 10 strength on un un unallocated passives. What does that mean? Does that, that means that all of these strength nodes, uh, so all of this additional strength that we're getting on nodes that we don't have allocated, which are within the circle of Transcendent Flesh, uh, are giving us crit multi, right? So you can see here that uh, this Transcendent Flesh is now giving us 113 Critical Strike Multiplier. That is more Critical Strike Multiplier than we, we, we could ever get with any other jewel, of course. And um, yeah, it is a really, really strong choice to go for uh, here. And it almost costs absolutely nothing since we are pathing out to, uh, you know, this, this gives us a little bit of resistances, resistances, and boom. Grab that. Of course, another benefit of Scion is that we are getting all of that skill effect duration there. We have easy access to this skill effect duration here as well. And this makes it so we don't actually need to run the duration helmet enchant. And it frees up some of the choices that we can make there. But another cool thing about this Transcendent Flesh is that uh, on, as you know, on Lethal Pride, you can also get flat strength on notables, right? You can see here that I managed to find 20 flat strength on that notable. What that does is that gives us 14 crit multi because of that. You can, you can maybe like look for ones that have like Flat strength here as well and here, but I, I couldn't find one honestly. But yeah, there's also flat strength on that one too, so that's really good too. Honestly, this transcendent flesh is just insane. So if you manage to actually find like a good lethal pride combination with that and you put those together, uh yeah, you're basically gonna be getting a ton of crit multi. So that is the first uh, the first reason as to why I like to go scion over uh occultist. But the second reason, of course, is because of its ascendancies, right? Uh why else would you go? Uh, for an ascendancy if not for his ascendancies so the first reason is slayer slayer is really nice it gives us 30 percent increased area of effect if you've killed recently and of course on a blade vortex build the only time we need area of effect is while we're mapping 
And so, yeah, that's one we've killed recently, of course. Uh, life Leech is not removed up upon full life, so that's really nice. So we're going to be getting Over Leech while mapping. It's going to keep us, uh, you know, it's going to help us sort of counteract some of those degens and stuff like that. So that's really nice. And Cooling Strike, so that ends up being like 10% more damage there. And then I go for Raider, uh, because Raider, honestly, is pretty insane on Scion. And what that gives me is 20% Suppression. Uh, that enables me to basically not take any Suppression whatsoever on my gear and it frees up a lot of the suffixes that way then it gives us 10 movement speed onslaught while you're on full frenzies and 10 percent chance to gain frenzy uh, while you hit a rare unique enemy so essentially this is going to give me uh frenzy sustain while mapping as well as onslaught and um you know uh, movement speed and suppression which is really really nice for the times that maybe the onslaught is not up i am actually using um you know silver flask so essentially for maybe like the start of the map or until your uh charges ramp up you might actually uh, want something there to keep your onslaught up but uh, for the most part it's pretty much always up so that's not a problem and yeah of course the main reason um is for the frenzy charges which is a ton more damage and also the utility that you get from the suppression and movement speed is really nice uh, the third ascendancy with that i access with forbidden flesh and flame completely up to you what you grab um for me it's anywhere in between assassin saboteur or uh inquisitor now inquisitor gives us a ton of damage uh, while we're near enemies and also gives us, you know, the effects of consecrated ground and stuff like that, as well as 8% uh, penetration and so on and so forth. But that loses a little bit of value with Omni, but it's still very, very strong. Uh, Saboteur gives us 30% increased AoE and 7% more damage from the, um, you know, the hits have 50% chance to deal 50% more damage, as well as blind, which is really nice since we're an invasion build. Um, and Assassin gives us uh, power charge on crit, uh, elusive if when you when you crit, and uh, also some base crit, which is really nice for, of course, getting us closer to crit cap and giving our explode also a little bit of crit. So I, I swap mostly between Saboteur and Assassin, depending on what I do, but I like Assassin because it gives you elusive and elusive is a nice speed buff. And I, you know, the main thing, that I want this build to do is to, to run maps fast. So Assassin is my choice there. All right, so the next really cool thing about Scion and why I chose Scion is the fact that when you use Omni on a Scion, your attributes are all balanced. So that means that your Int and Strength are gonna be your highest attributes and same with your Dexterity. What, what that enables you to do, that enables you to use the Rational Doctrine to its full effect. As you can see here, it says um, you have Consecrated Ground around you while stationary if Strength is your highest attribute. And also um, gives you Profane Ground, so a chance to create a Profane Ground on Critical Strike if Intelligence is your highest attribute. And since they are equal, it means that those are both your highest attributes. So this enables us to unlock the full potential of uh, Rational Doctrine, uh, granting us Consecrated Ground um, while we're stationary as well as uh, Consecrated Ground is going to be lingering on us uh, for four seconds. So basically, anytime we cast, um, we're going to create Consecrated Ground, and that's going to give us four seconds of the effects of Consecrated Ground. And you might think like, oh, that's that's just some regen, right? Like, who cares? But the crazy thing is that you, you actually are able to put that regen to use with Comb Spirit, uh, which is one of the interactions that I use for this build to make it go faster. On top of that, of course, uh, the Profane Ground gives you, you know, 10% penetration, as well as 100% increased damage uh, to enemies which are on profane ground, which, you know, 25% chance to create uh, profane ground basically means that you're going to be always getting the benefits of this effect when you need it so against enemies that you hit like more than four times, which we hit like, you know, seven, I think six or seven times per second anyways. So that'll be like basically all the time. And then since now we have all of the scalers that we need, we have crit multi, we have some AoE, some duration, our, uh, of course, um, you know, like our reservation efficiency and whatnot, we path out to here. Grab Charisma for more auras, then we go straight into clusters. So this build is a very cluster heavy build. That is because I want to get as much area of effect as possible. And the nice thing about that as well is that uh, the area of effect comes with uh, life, right? So we're able to get like a decent enough life pool through this uh, just by stacking towering threats. And we get that, you know, four times on our mediums and we can get it as many times as we want on our smalls. But since we have so many powerful uh, cluster jewels, uh, sorry, small jewels now, it's quite hard to actually be able to fit more of these. Um, but since we do have the uh, uh, access to the Saboteur Forbidden Flesh and Flame, I think it's okay because we get 30% AoE that way. Um, I path out to here and I grab this mastery. Three crit uh, to crit support gems, which is really nice when you're using a, a bow that has a plus one socket of gems and also uh, plus two to support gems. What that means is that um, my inspiration support is actually going to be level 26. And that is actually a breaking point for inspiration where originally it gives you 5% more elemental damage per inspiration charge. But if you get it to 26, it actually gives you 6% more elemental damage per inspiration charge. So this master actually ends up being like 
uh, 5% more damage, which is really nice for a one-pointer there. I path out to here, I grab more attributes, and I will also, uh, you know, grab some life and some additional ailment avoidance from this life cluster, and of course, another cluster. Now, it is really important for the build to have uh, Inspired Depression, because this is going to give us the mana regeneration rate that we need to be able to cast BV whenever we want, and also um to have one doriani's lesson this is going to be to enable the overleech as well as leech of course and uh, yeah the second choice for cluster is of course we want the sadist notable because the sadist notable is insane with this build as we are a tri elemental uh blade vortex we convert to lightning we convert to fire we convert to cold and what that means is, is that we get full effect of the sadist and this is uh, basically like a seven percent more damage notable so we want to look for clusters that have this uh, in the front, this combination of Doriani, Sadist, Spire Depression, and Sadist again. So you can look at the back here, there's widespread destruction on that one, and corrosive elements on that one, and th that's how I ended up getting those. This socket here is totally up to you whether you use this or not. So what you can do instead of grabbing an Inspired Learning is you can put a Watcher's Eye here, uh, unspec these two nodes, and then put a small, uh, small cluster there for more AoE. But I decided to go for an Inspired Learning, of course that is because it gives us some speed, and, you know, if you can afford it, of course, you get the Corrupted Blood cannot be inflicted on you on that, which is really nice. Um, and since most of the jewels on this build are going to be very expensive, the easiest way to actually get, you know, mitigation to Corrupted Blood is actually go for upgraded Rada Cash, which is quite unfortunate. But, you know, that is basically uh, how I managed to tackle that. All right. So that is basically uh, the, the decision why I wanted to go for uh, Scion, why I think it's uh, really good in this situation. Of course, the damage, access to the nodes in the center, which scale both our AoE and duration, and of course, gra uh, grabbing uh, Charisma for more mana reservation efficiency and pathing down, Frenzy, as well as Inspired Learning, and managing to fit our clusters. So now we can look at some of the itemization decisions that I made on this build. Uh, the belt is basically transferable as much, uh, you know, with how, however rich you are. If you want to go for um, a Mage Blood, you can, of course, if you want to go for a Headhunter, I think that is the best choice for doing any sort of juice content can and otherwise you use a stygian or in my in my situation i chose to go for a torrent reclamation when i'm not using my mage blood so this is just to showcase the fact that you, this build is going to be just as quick and really nice uh without mage blood and you do not necessarily need it even without these two nodes i am going to be risk capped with the amount of omni that i have and that is with basically just one resistance um uh, ring you know with like all elemental resistance and some resistance on the implicit so okay i managed to go for a bow and this is an explode bow. You're going to think that is extremely expensive. I cannot afford that. What is this build? But yeah, um, what you can do instead of using an explode bow, of course, is go for Oriath's End, which is about uh, 12 divines uh, from, from when this video was recorded. So you can go for Oriath's End instead of that, and you can get a high roll up to 30%. You do that. So the explode bow is basically just a luxury. You can get any synthesized implicit or even just movement speed implicit if you want to go uh, about it that way. Yeah, and the way that I crafted it is... Um, I managed to get all these notables that I wanted together. I basically got uh, Fist Aligning and uh, Increased AoE here. So this is effectively 40% Increased AoE. And then I got Fist Aligning because I am socketing my Blade Vortex into that. And this is the, actually the only way that I can get full conversion if I'm using Combs Spirit. So the problem with Combs Spirit is that, you know, usually Gloves is where you convert most of your physical damage to whatever, right? And since, uh, you know, you can't do that on Combs Spirit, that means that we have to get our conversion somewhere else. Somewhere else. The downside of this is that our explode is not going to be fully converted, but even when it's like uh, partially and mostly converted, it doesn't really matter all that much. And another thing that I did to get uh, as much conversion as possible is I ended up going for a Hatred Watchers with conversion, so that's 37% there. And then I have 25% uh, here converted to fire. So we have cold conversion, fire conversion, and lightning conversion. So we can shock, we can ignite, and we can chill. That en enables our sadist, as well as, obviously, the extra effects that we get from uh, shock, which is going to make enemies take, you know, up to 50% uh, increased damage, depending on how much HP they have. But, you know, on bigger targets, we are going to be dealing um, roughly 20% increased damage to them. All right, so that is the explode bomb. And what I did is I ended up uh, buying bases and merging fistle lightning with air of effect. And when I had those two together, I imprinted my bow. <clears throat> and then I went for the next two, so I went 100% global multi and minus 3% base crit. This base crit is local to the weapon, so you know you don't have to worry about that at all. It's not going to affect your BV negatively. And then plus one dexterity gems. So yeah, I ended up uh, merging from um, the outermost node into the innermost nodes into uh, dexterity. So basically you can do that quite easily with imprints. And it took me about five imprints to get all of this going 
as long as you follow sort of the methodology that um, Captain Lance put out on one of his previous videos, you'll be able to do this pretty efficiently and pretty easily. Also remember that there are um, you know maps that you can buy that have a higher chance to retain notables which you have spec. Uh, one thing to be careful of is that some of them are being sold for cheaper because they uh, have the potential to corrupt your forged items. So make sure that you are keeping an eye out for those that you're not destroying your bow that way. So yeah, and that are merging that way. Uh, the other thing that is actually the most expensive thing about this build is the chest. So the chest is unfortunately old influence and that is the only way to get the additional explosion uh, over there. You do not necessarily need um, elevated explode, although it does give the AOE and a little bit more explode. So that's why I liked it. But non-elevated explode is 30%. So as you can see, it's basically just a 3% difference. But the modifier that I really, really like on body armor is uh, every four second regenerate 25% of life over one second. That is what is going to give me my insane uptime on Berserk, which at the moment is uh, 26 seconds. I can start to get it down here. Last time I counted it was 26 seconds. I hope it's the same, but here we go. So we're going to click that and you can tell me exactly how long that lasts. So yeah. And the way that I managed to do that is by also getting this helmet enchant there and uh, some suffixes. So you can see that I got uh, regenerate here um, fractured and I also got regenerate here fractured. Although you could get percent regeneration, life regeneration is better. So you can get up to 21% there. And uh, yep, that ended up being actually really short because I didn't have my stone column out. So we'll put them out again and then we'll try that again. All right, so yeah, so that is the bow. We look at the quiver. So the quiver, I just crafted with, uh, you know, multi essences until I had dexterity and then I locked out into chaos res, but you do want to look for another suffix. And then you lock your suffixes, you veiled chaos. But the most important thing is that you do get your conversion on quiver. You can go for lining, you can go for fire, you can go for cold conversion. That is totally up to you. Um, depending on the price, of course, I managed to lock out and I also got crit multi on mine, which is insane. Uh, the Omni, you know, is just Omni. I, uh, I got sovereignty on that so that I could reserve more auras. That is because I am reserving a low level clarity. That's just to give me a tiny bit of regen that is scaled by the percent. I got uh, Grace. I got Enlightened Level 4, Zealotry, Hatred, and Herald of Ash. Herald of Ash is for, of course, the way the build looks. <laughs> it looks fantastic. So yeah, you put Herald of Ash in there. And Hatred is going to give us the conversion as well as some physics extra scaling. Zealotry is going to give us the crit as well as more spell damage and consecrated ground, which is going to, you know, synergize with our regen and so on and so forth. Yeah. Right. So uh, to get our full ailment avoidance, you do need either crafted ailment avoidance on chest or um, unveiled. So I ended up going for unveiled. That way I could lock prefixes and reforge um, for casters to give me spell crit. Uh, it's up to you however you do that, although I will link uh, a way to craft that as well as a way to craft a bow deterministically. It can cost uh, quite a bit of money to get a chest like this, but um, you know it's one of those things that if you don't like crafting, it's probably best you buy. But it is uh, the most expensive thing on this build um, because of the fact that it's old influences and old influence has, hasn't received any sort of quality of light changes. That And we want to use the Sadist Garb, of course, for plus one to our Vald skill gems, which is our Blade Vortex, which we buy uh, Vald, of course. You can go for 2020 or 2120, of course, depending on how much currency you have. I choose to go for a Death Rush because I like the speed and the recovery for mapping. And the second ring life gain on hit is also, also always nice, although that is not totally necessary since if you're just mapping, you're basically going to be getting infinite life on kill. Um, the boost is just standard avoid elemental resistance, uh, elemental elements with also avoid elemental element implicit and some action speed. And then, yeah, that pretty much sums it up for the gear. That about, that about sums up um, the build. I hope that I didn't miss anything. If there is stuff that I've missed, let me know. I will link the POB in the description. And if you have any questions, of course, you're always welcome to pop by the stream. You know, ask. I'll be playing this build for a little while longer until I go for the next build. Yeah, I'd be happy to answer all your questions. And yeah, when we do put on Mage Blood, this build becomes even zoomier. So you can just chuck that on and swap your flasks if you are rich. And you'll absolutely zoom. All right. Thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you guys again soon. Mm. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, man.